advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we're playing Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, the newest box of the same game, really, uh, the Baker Street Irregulars. And we are doing case number one, the Curzon Street Kidnapping. Ooh. Who do you think I kidnapped on Curzon Street? Um, Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah, he might, he might have. There's the... The art on that one. Well, this happened in November uh, on November nineteenth, eighteen eighty-five. So I don't think Kid Rock was quite around. And in London, on a Thursday, Jack, and Jack the Rocker. It was Jack the Rocker. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Through the early 1880s, the Baker Street Irregulars were occasionally summoned by the consulting detective Sherlock Holmes to help him track down a suspect or obtain the kinds of knowledge about London's dark underbelly that inconspicuous and agile street children are particularly adept at acquiring. But it was not until a November's day in 1885 that the Irregulars had their first chance to demonstrate the true extent of their deductive skills. At that point, they began to progress from, what, from being occasional helpers of the great detective to becoming his steadfast colleagues. On a clear and icy November morning, we have been summoned to Baker Street by the note from Holmes. There's the note. You guys see the note? It's nice. Yes. Please come to my home. Please, uh, yeah, take the back door so no one sees you. No pants. Uh, come quickly. Hang on. <laughs> Let me just get ready. We're really getting into theme. <laughs> come quickly. Client expected. Obtain particulars of case. May be late. Holmes, as he's doing his heroin. Dr. Watson admits us. Apparently, Holmes has been at Baker Street very little during these last few days, he says, as Miss Hudson pours hot tea for us all to stave off the winter cold. I received a note similar to yours. I wonder what he's up to, remarks Wiggins. Shortly after, Miss Hudson shows a tall, dark-haired woman of middle age into the room. She has a kind face that suggests an underlying calmness, but that bears the anxious demeanor of someone who has endured recent turmoil. She scans the room, presumably wondering which of us is the detective. It's you. It's me. It's me. We're all the detective. I identify as the detective. <laughs> My name is Dr. Watson. The doctor moves forward and pours tea for our guests to try to alleviate the awkwardness of the situation. Mr. Holmes is running late, but sends his apologies. In the meantime, if you would care to tell us what it is that brings you here, we are all his trusted associates and lovers. She takes a breath and smiles. It is clear she feels she has come to a safe place. She starts to disrobe. Very well, Dr. Watson. You may have read something of me in the newspapers. My name is Wendy Sturton, and a few days ago, I was kidnapped. Ah! Well, we found you! Case solved! Well, that was easy. <laughs> Are you making stuff up again? <laughs> Which part? Uh, the newspaper? It does say a few days ago I was kidnapped. Ah, says Wiggins, your governess to the train family. Capital T for the train family. Yes, she replies breathlessly. I have been governess to them for just over a year. I look over their children, Duncan and Clarence, and take care of other household matters. I took up the position when I moved to London from Derbyshire, where I was governess for Lord and Lady Snowed. Are you keeping up, Cat? <laughs> The trains have been good to me, and I adore the children. Everything seemed wonderful until recently. But I digress, and must return to the point of my visit. On the afternoon of 16th November, that is two days, that is three days before the event, I was on an errand to obtain some more la laudanum from the chemist. A little Duncan was ill, as little Duncan was ill with a cough. I thought we had some in the house, but when I checked, the bottle was empty. I was turning off Curzon Street onto Half Moon Street when I heard a carriage come close beside me. Suddenly, there was an arm around, about me and something over my mouth, so I could not scream. I was pushed into the carriage and then something over my head so I could not see. I was, it was quite arousing. We can then see that recounting the events is of some difficulty for her, but she retains her composure remarkably well. I was lifted up and placed on a seat, and a voice whispered to me, Sorry if that was a little rough. It'll be easier now. I remember the phrasing because it felt strange, you understand, in that context. 
I do not know how long I was in the carriage. It seemed an age, but I could hear the busy sounds of the city for most of that time. And then I remember it grew quieter. I was led out of the carriage into a building, then tied to a chair. I could hear whispering while this was happening, and I am sure there were two people with me in that room. <gasps> there I stayed overnight. I could not sleep, and at times there were movements and sounds that indicated to me there was someone else in the room. A fire was kept burning, and occasionally I would smell tobacco, though I am not a smoker myself. So when asked, I could not give the police any indication of the brand being consumed. I asked why I was being kept and what they wanted. After I had asked perhaps 20 times, my captor became sick of my questioning, and I finally received a shot to the jaw. No, and I finally received an answer. We're just waiting for a payment, miss. Then you can go. Be patient. Well, Dr. Watson, it is hard to be patient when one is tied to a chair and held captive in some, uh, in some unknown place, but I told myself there was nothing I could do, and so I waited. At one time, a soft voice spoke to me and asked if I was in need of anything. I think it may have been a woman's voice, but I cannot be sure. I asked for water and was duly given some. Eventually, on what I took to be the next day, I heard movement and whispering. Then the man said loudly, They're not going to pay! Let's release her! I was taken back to the carriage. The sounds of the city quickly returned, and shortly afterwards, I was told to step onto the street. I did so, and it was a few moments before I realized my captors had gone. Some people found me and unbound my hands and removed my blindfold. I saw I was in a small alley near Stratton Street, not far from the spot where I was taken. The police interviewed me, and I told them everything I have told you. That, I hoped, was the end of it, and the police certainly thought as much. So, Stratton Street, uh... <coughs> yep. <laughs> yep. We'll look for that in a sec. Oh, uh, look. Alright, but the problem is, Dr. Watson, the police have not caught the kidnappers, and I fear they have seized their search. I have tried to move on from this incident, but I cannot. I have always thought of myself as an independent woman. I grew up near Buxton in Derbyshire, and I would spend my mornings walking over the majestic hills of that county. Now I get what I can from the London parks, but at this time of year, they are not frequented in early morning, which is when I have my leisure time. I know the policeman who works in the parks, which gives me a degree of security, but in some of the areas I walk, I hardly ever see another soul. I tried to go for a walk yesterday, but the first time in my life, the isolation made me afraid. Well, if the kidnappers come back for me again, I need to know I'm safe. Miss Sturton, says Wiggins, before you began this narrative, I wasn't listening. You suggested that something had changed for the worse in the train household. Could you tell us what that was? I do not see that it can have anything to do with my kidnapping, but the atmosphere in the house has changed. Miss Train uh, had been kind to me, a welcoming and peaceful soul, since I began working for her, but this summer she became more distant, occasionally overcome with bouts of melancholy. Around the same time, Duncan's cough came back, and Dr. Richards thought it could be an infection. Miss Train loves her children dearly, and each time Duncan is ill, she takes care of him. I wonder if that has contributed to her sadness. Thank, thank you, Miss Sturton. Miss Sturton, says Wiggins. It may mean nothing, but as Mr. Holmes says, any slight detail can be important. Speaking of Holmes, where is he? asked Tinker. I, I don't know, asked Watson, but perhaps we should begin this investigation ourselves. I'm sure you all have learned something of Holmes' methods over the years you have worked for him. What do you say, Wiggins? Are you and your irregulars ready to tackle the mystery? Wiggins looks to us, and we all nod, eager to get started. Good, says Watson. Then as Holmes would say, the game is afoot. Whew! All right, Cat. I'm sure you got every little detail of that. So, what do you have written down? Nothing. Nothing. I just wrote down how much I don't like Miss Sturton. Miss Sturton. <laughs> We're looking for a, a foot, as I recall. A foot. The game, the game is a foot. We're looking for a game. Sorry. We're looking for a game that has a foot. Okay. Football well, game. Well, that is interesting. Did you find? Uh, did you find that the uh, the road? Did you? No, ride? Stratton Street. Yeah. No, I so, was hoping that somebody in the directory would. Gotcha. Be, would okay. Give me an indication. So there is Curzon Street, which they said. But was. I did find a newspaper article related. Oh, okay. Good deal. You want me to read it? Yeah. Governess released. Scotland Yard have announced that Miss Wendy Sturton, reported kidnapped on Monday, was discovered and returned home on Tuesday afternoon unharmed and with no ransom having been paid. Miss Sturton is governess to the Train family. The details of her capture and release, in particular that she was left in a city street tied and blindfolded, have led police to suspect that the gang responsible are that same that carried out the Dunsworthy kidnapping. Ooh, interesting. In a semi-related note, the new Dunsworthy Art Gallery opened last night. Ooh. Okay. I can continue, but there's a connection. Okay. <clears throat> it's just an announcement of the art gallery opening. Gotcha. Well, was it Dunsworthy? 
Yes, Dunsworthy Art, Art Gallery and the Dunsworthy Kidnapping. Interesting. So I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if we can, if I can find the street, then that would, that might give us some, some. Oh, Stamford, Stamford Street. Could is that, be. Is that what I said? I thought it was Stratford, but it could have been Stamford. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me look through here. Uh, okay. Um, okay, that's how I would spend my mornings overnight. Um, yeah, it was Stratton Street. Damn it. Damn. Oh God, it's so tiny. Yeah. Um, this and map I, is just like a map of Paris. <laughs> it's like, okay, great. Uh, all right, well, so scene of the crime would be great to go at. Well, uh, don't we have a scene of the crime? We it, It's Curzon Street oh, okay. is where she was taken, and she was released on Stratton Street. Oh. And for the record, I should say, because I didn't say it for some other games, if this, all this will be spoilers. If you watch till the end, um, you will know <laughs> the answers. Uh, and stuff to this particular case, but this is one of ten. Actually, it's technically one of forty because there's multiple Sherlock Holmes games. Um, all right, Kat, what are you thinking? Go to the scene of the crime. All right, neat. So now we just need to find Curzon Street. <laughs> However, we do have these informants that we can. Uh, the carriage stables might be really good if if they use obviously carriages to put her in. Uh, they might know something about actually going who like used them. who used them. Yeah. Lestrade, he is the uh, like the head of the Scotland Yard. Uh, we there is another guy, um, Porky Porky Shinwell. He's the owner of Rat, uh, Raven and Rat, source of information on all illegal affairs. So he might know something. Yeah. Le Langsdale Pike, he's a social columnist and knows all London society gossip. Um, don't need really the medical examiner because she was fine. Well, she was picking up. A Loudnum, Loudnum yeah. for the kids, so he might come in handy. Oh, like for, oh. What is Loudnum? Loudnum is, I don't know. It's a... It's, a, it's, it's, an, it's an old medicine. Something we wouldn't use today. It's, it's highly poisonous if... Oh, is it? Used improperly, yeah. Oh, okay. It's, okay, let's see here. All right. So, oh, gotcha. Okay, she was fucking them up. Uh, contains almost all of the opium alkaloids. Includes morphine. And Stratton codeine. Street. Yeah. Curzon Street. Oh, Excellent. it is just op okay. opium. Basically, yeah. it's it's pretty much opium. Like, like hey, opium. little kid, let's get you addicted. Get you nice and addicted. All right, we found it. So Curzon Street. So I bet if we seen the crime, if we do sixty one Northwest or sixty two Northwest, we might we might get something. Makes sense. That's between uh, the two, or that's on one of them. That it, it might be on one of them. So, <clears throat> like, I would just find northwest. Um, so you pick one place and one one clue to follow for your turn. Turns, yes. Yeah, okay. Like, I mean, I have never played this game where it was a turn. Okay. Because it's just so open ended. We kind of just discuss. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> and we need Cat to basically keep track of the lead. So, okay. do we just want to do sixty one? Sure. sure. Curzon Street found it. It's right over here. So they it's dropped her off like a block away. It was used as a cough suppressant. So it is okay. likely that they are in that area the whole time. So 60. Well, no. Didn't she say something about how far she traveled? Um. Yeah, she, she felt she like she traveled a long distance. She heard the city for a while and then, um, then it got quiet. Okay. Uh, so they were probably in Hyde Park. Well, that's where she... Oh, well, that's like when she said she liked to take walks mm -hmm. in parks. But no, Brett's on the right track. When they got her in the carriage, she heard the city for a while, and then it got quiet. To obtain some more laudanum from the chemist, a little dunker was... Ill. I thought we had some in the house, but when I checked, I was turning off Curzon Street onto Half Moon Street, where I heard a carriage come close beside me. So, so... Keep reading. Suddenly, there was an arm about me, and suddenly I could not scream. I was pushed into the carriage. Keep reading. Uh, I was in play, and a voice was sorry if I was a little. Rough. I remember the phrasing because it felt strange. In that con, I do not know how long I was in the carriage. It seemed an age, but I could hear the busy sounds of the city for most of the time. And I remember it grew quieter. Uh huh. So she heard the city for most of the ride. Yes, but we're not following the trail of the carriage. We're following the scene of the crime where she was initially kidnapped, which was still on Curzon Street. Yeah. So what was the question then? <sighs> sixty-one or sixty-two for Curzon Street? Oh. Both. Pick one f first, and then the other. Right, sixty-one. <laughs> Northwest. Um, uh, okay. 
That is... That is 61 Northwest. I also don't mm -hmm. know how to spell Curzon Street. C-U-R-Z-O-N. Well, that also takes us to interesting. Uh, can I see the London Directory? Sure. <clears throat> that takes us somewhere else. It takes us to Kenneth Train as well. That's his house because she's the heir to the Train family. Uh, uh, she's sorry, governess. Governess. Yes. All right. So I guess we're also talking to Kenneth Train, because 62. I guess actually she said she was turning on Curzon Street onto Half Moon Street, so it technically would be 63. Okay. Um, um, so it's 63? Uh, yeah, it'd be 63. An old man with a monocle and a limp answers the door and looks us over. We ask him about the day of the kidnapping. He shakes his head. No, sorry. The police have already asked me, and I've told them as I tell you. I saw nothing out of the, uh, the ordinary on that day. Okay. So that's one lead. Who was he? An old man with a monocle. And a limp. It was it was, Mr. Magoo. No, so he was, either, he was, either saw nothing, or he's afraid. Right. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, with, with uh, these types of games, there's no way we can really know. Mm -hmm. um, but... What we can also do is go talk to Kenneth Train. Mm -hmm. He would be related to her or work for her. Yep. yep. If we want to do that. Her employer. Yeah, her employer. Yep. That sounds useful. What do you think, Kat? Sure. All righty. Because I'm already there. Kenneth Train is a stocky, balding man. Wait, is, is this 61? 61 Northwest, yep. Kenneth Train is a stocky, balding man in his early 40s. The police have the note we received, he says. It was found on the doorstep under a rock at 5 p.m. on 16th November, and he asked me to leave 2000 under the Putney Bridge at dawn. It was absurd. We called the police, but I believe it must be a prank. I cannot pay such a ransom. I did not tell the police this at the time, but I contacted my uncle Lawrence to inquire about funds he may have available. My uncle suggested he may be able to assist, though not for the entire sum. In any case, I did not receive that reply from him until after Miss Sturton had been returned to us. Why do you think the kidnappers targeted your family, Mr. Train? Why, indeed. I am the manager of a cotton factory and reasonably well off, but I could not obtain that kind of money. Perhaps they knew I had a rich uncle. Was anyone seen leaving the note at the door? No. The police think it, it likely an anonymous street urchin was paid to leave it. Could you tell us about Miss Sturton? Ah, oh, Miss Sturton, such a ravenous young lady has been a wonderful addition to our household. There is a little that seems to shake her. Indeed, she is one of the most independent women I have ever met. What kind of things does she do in your household, asks Wiggins. Oh, what doesn't she do? My wife can best answer that for you, Kenneth replies. I will fetch her. A moment later, he re-enters the room with a short woman in her mid-thirties, with dark rings under her eyes like she has not slept. Letitia Train looks worried by her presence and responds to our questions, but seems uncomfortable, occasionally fidgeting or scratching while she talks. She's a suspect. She needed the money. I don't know. Wendy cares for the children and conducts other errands as necessary. Each day she arises early, around 6, and sees to the children, dressing breakfast and such. She takes her free time between 7 and 9 when the tutor, Mr. Edgar Newmerch, comes to deliver lessons. Wendy normally takes a long walk in the park, I believe. How she bears the cold, I do not know. She comes back at 9 a.m., helps to prepare luncheon, then does an English or a Bible lesson with the children, which is usually completely useless, followed by household tasks and running errands. Then comes our evening meal, and soon after, she puts the children to bed. And was that her schedule on the day she was kidnapped? Yes. In the afternoon, Duncan could not eat his lunch because he was feeling unwell, so one of her errands was to get some uh, laudanum from the chemist, which is when it happened. I thought the police had dealt with this, Kenneth. They've not caught anyone, he replies. These fellows may find something new. Wiggins smiles at Letitia Train, but she simply turns and leaves the room. I do not itch to pry into personal matters, Mr. Train, says Wiggins. But Miss Sturton said your wife had been in low spirits. Do you know what may be the cause? I think you do wish to pry into personal matters, Mr. Wiggins, he replies. But I will make allowances because I know the goal of your inquiries is a worthy one. I will also be frank. I do not think my wife's mood is in any way related to the affair you are investigating. She was taken ill for a time, then Duncan's coughing problems began again, and then my mother died. Even executing the kidnapping this year has not been an easy one. 
Okay. So. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Could you repeat that, please? Um, what exactly do we think we are trying to achieve? We're trying to figure out why the kidnappers kidnapped Wendy and who kidnapped her. Who did it? Um, Makes sense. And it seems suspicious pretty much that, who kidnapped her. Uh, it seems suspicious that she was released without consequence. A couple days after. Yeah. Yeah. And treated nicely, which is fine. I mean, mm -hmm. they were really genuinely holding her for ransom. They sure. Weren't trying to My thinking, because she wasn't treated badly, mm -hmm. is that it's someone that knows her. Right. It makes me think of that it is... Okay, yeah, we know, we, we and they know it's her exact routine, they knew exactly where she was going to be, where she was going, mm -hmm. and they left her somewhere near the house, so it makes me think that it was someone inside who potentially, hey, I want to get money, because mm -hmm. it, it sounds like that they're well off, but not enough to get 2,000 pounds, Right. Um, like, j at the drop of a hat. Yeah. So maybe it was someone who's like, I'm tired of being fucking poor, and I'm going to use you as a ransom and get the money. Could be someone who works at the factory. Who knows? But it seems to me that, you know, he said, he remarked how he tried to gather the money, and he couldn't. Yeah. And he re didn't really want to, but he did He did make an effort. Yeah. Just couldn't do it. And then suddenly they go, well, he's not going to pay. Let's go. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's just leave. Yeah. So it would be uh, someone who would be privy to that information. Right. My initial suspect is the wife, mm -hmm. thinking that I'm going to get the money so I can help my son. Mm -hmm. That would be that would be my, my very first gut instinct. What was wrong with the son again? Uh, hit coughing. Some, oh, okay. And, and it, it went away, then it came back, and they're thinking it's an infection. And somebody died. The mother. Died. The mother. The mother died. Um, they said that the wife was taken ill. Um so it's kind so of. So you think the dad doesn't take care of the kid? Maybe it could be some household distress that it's like you're not doing fucking anything to save our son. Like you keep giving him opium. <laughs> like that's not helping. Well, it was back then. Uh, yeah. I mean. But you can't cough. If it's better than shit. heroin. That's true. <laughs> Is it? It was. <laughs> oh, it was. They okay. refined the heroin a lot <laughs> since then. Yeah, so... They made heroin pretty quickly. So, I mean, because she the, she knew... This woman knew her exact schedule. Wakes yes. up at 6, breakfast, 7 to 9, as she's taking a break. Mm -hmm. uh, then, from then on, 9, lunch, Bible, English or Bible lesson, mm -hmm. you know, household tasks, running errands. Then she went to... He couldn't eat his lunch, so she went to the chemist. And then that's when she was kidnapped. But that evening is she helps with dinner and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I am not seeing anything. And I mean, useful. it makes sense that she knows her schedule. I mean, yeah. right. It, but that's also what kind of leads me to. I mean, like like what Brett said, it's she she got water. Mm -hmm. She was allowed to sleep. She was in a room with fire. Yeah. It's just kind of like. She, they were never going to hurt her, and yeah, you mentioned, oh, well, he's not going to pay, let's just take her back. You normally it's like, he's not going to pay, but let's just fucking kill her, you know? Yeah. So it's just It'd extortion. It'd be safer to kill her. Yeah. It was a failed extortion attempt. Yeah. But yep. they knew but that it not, failed quickly. And they're yeah. not violent, and they probably have a woman with them. Oh, yeah, they had a woman. Um, did, I oh, wrote, yeah. I wrote that it was someone soft-spoken, that she says she okay. thinks it was a woman. But she wasn't sure. So it's either just a really timid person, or, or a woman. Yeah. Um, I'm not seeing anything else useful in these two newspaper articles. Okay. I, I think that they might be related to other cases or... Probably. Yeah, whatever. with the... So so Scotland Yard says they think it's the same people who did the, what was it, the Dubbery? Or the... the Dunsworthy. Dunsworthy. Kidnapping, Dunsworthy. Um, who just recently opened their new art gallery. And I'm sure it does somehow have something to do with the fucking art gallery. So. Probably. It, it might, or that might be related to a future case. Right. Sure. But... Um, so I'm kind of leaning, I mean, we can do the... There is a death of an infant, and related to the Dunsworthy kidnapping, so the death of an infant possibly related. For But for the Dunsworthy? Family. No, I, well, but I mean, to the same people. So okay. the police suspect the same people who did that kidnapping kidnapped the mm -hmm. governess as well. That's what they suspect. Right, right, that right. That doesn't make it true. And I, I don't think it's the husband, because he... Like, he, he knows he has a rich uncle. He even called him, and his uncle was like, 
Hey, I can yeah. help, but I can't give you all that money. Yeah. Maybe he was like, I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can't link the husband to doing it, but Maybe I can. Maybe it was like a long con kind of thing. Like, oh, hey, let's pretend to kidnap the governess. That way, I can ask my uncle for money. Right. Oops. Asked for too much. Yeah. So we're gonna lie low and then kidnap mm. her again later. Yeah. 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 Uh, what might also be really good is Disraeli O'Brien National Archives, Somerset House, all archives, birth, deaths, marriages, wills, land records, and old criminal records. Well, why? Do we need to go there? L- learn more about the Train family. Maybe about and the criminal records. And well, criminal if we records. Learn more about the Train family. Wouldn't we want to go to the High Society guy? Um, probably the High Society guy. Whatever his name is. Uh, Gunsworth. I don't know what you're talking about with the high society can I, guy. Can I? Oh, one of these the is a high society that, guy. That talks about gossip or whatever. Oh, society yeah. Society gossip, Langdale Pike. Langdale Pike. Yeah. Yeah. If they were in some kind my, of my financial trouble or yeah. some or medical problems, we're we're now suspecting that it's a medical problem that she was trying to get money to take care of. What if the lion mm. was there for was the mom? Hmm? She, she what could if be the laudanum addict. was for the mom and she was like, hey. <laughs> she has a drug addiction? <laughs> cough a little bit. <laughs> Fucking cough! <laughs> I need my I need my opium. Um I mean, I don't know, I'm just Right. But let's pick one. Um I'm definitely thinking the stables, the carriage stables. Well, yeah. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> let's go. Five W. Don't rush me. Rush. Let's go. Okay. That let's is. go. Hurry up! Why aren't you reading already? It's just five W. Where is it? Let's go. Um. Oh, five W C. I was like, there is no W in here. <laughs> oh my god. Five is the address. Uh, it's actually not in here. Oh, okay. Well then. So. Okay. So. I didn't work. Right? Well, we know it doesn't have anything. Well, I don't think they, they probably have their own carriage. Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's go to... I guess it was a source of information on the movement of suspects, but I guess we don't have any suspects, have any suspects really. <laughs> it must have been their own carriage then. Uh. So you're thinking Langdale Pike? That's just... Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see what okay. we get. So, 2SW. Alright. I'm not a fan of the man myself, says Watson as we enter the Society's Club. He is a strange, languid creature who makes a living from publishing all manner of scandal, but Holmes will not hear a bad word said about Langdale Pike and finds him invaluable when gossip about the lives of London's upper class is required. It's Dr. Watson, says a pale, effete man reclining on a chase, a cha- a cha- lounge <laughs> in a bay window on the club. But no sign of Holmes. What brings you my way, Doctor, with your intriguing comparisons? Companions, not comparisons. <laughs> Hello, Langdale, says Watson. Hello, Newman. <laughs> I'm not sure you have heard Holmes refer to the Baker Street Irregulars. Here they are, and we've come to ask about the Train family. We're investigating the kidnapping of their governess. Left tied and blindfolded on the street. Somewhere, wasn't she? Mm-hmm, says Langdale. I must admit... I rarely encounter the trains. A fairly ordinary and highly respectable family, as far as I'm aware. Not my kind of thing at all, and not particularly well off either. Unlike Lady Dunsworthy, now she had a daughter worth kidnapping. Kenneth Train's uncle is Lawrence Yale, a man more to my taste. In terms of his contribution to high society gossip, you understand. Yale is a known womanizer and owns racehorses. The wonderful Indian boy has been his real showstopper, and I may add, and, yeah, I may add, has been yours truly a bob or two in the past. (laughs) And what about the other name you mentioned, asked Wiggins, the Dunsworthies? Yes, victims of the same gang of kidnappers, I believe. Well, Lord Dunsworthy died three years ago and left his wife a fortune. Mary is their only child. Quite a delightful thing, and... Uh, an out-and-about socialite, always on her way to or from some party or other, though I understand her social activities have decreased since her kidnapping. Thank you, Mr. Pike, says Wiggins. Watson gives a curt nod, and we exit the club. Well, that was interesting. So they're not rich. Okay. The trains? Yeah. Uh, 
No. Fairly ordinary and not well off. And highly respectable family. Yeah. Um, and, and not particularly well off either. But they also corroborate that the same kidnappers for money. Yep. And unlike, yeah, Lady Dunsworthy, now she had a daughter worth kidnapping. Kenneth Train's uncle is Lawrence Yale, a man more than my taste, so Lawrence Yale might be someone worth talking to. Um, and that was Kenneth's uncle, you said? Yep. Yep. Lawrence Yale, 62 Southwest, so he is somewhere down here. All the way. Oh, this is. I think this is all southwest. Um, um this is southeast. Oh. Oh, yes, so it is. You're right. Yeah, because the Thames. Yeah. So 62 southwest is somewhere right there. Yeah. That's where he lives. That's not too far. It's not too far. The rest of this has all happened around here. Yep. I guess we can go talk to him. Yeah. Um. What's interesting is. Yeah, the, the the that's the second time that the Dursberries have been mentioned. Yep. Fan gang of kidnappers. The that's what is now worse. suspected by the police and, and the social and the social co column tabloids. I really want to talk to Porky. Oh yeah. Source yeah, yeah, of information yeah, yeah. on all illegal affairs and underworld figures. Yeah, now that it seems to be a serial. Right. Yeah, serial he's, kidnapping. He's always good to talk to. All right, 52 EC. He's that guy in the crime shows that you show up to, and they're like, hey, do you know this girl? <laughs> yeah, I saw her. <laughs> Why? Did something Why? bad did, happen did to her? Did something happen to her? Yeah, something definitely. That's why the police are here <laughs> asking about her. <laughs> no, the police just want to give her <laughs> a nice, a nice, a, a nice uh, trophy. All right, we have known... We all we have all known Porky Shinwell, landlord of the Raven and Rat public house for some time. He is a huge coarse man known for his cunning criminal mind and the time he spent in Parkhurst prison with a reputation for being something of a brute. So when Holmes first told us Porky was one of his informants and asked us to visit him to gather some details for our case, we were understandably nervous. However, if, if Porky still has a wicked side to his character, we have been lucky enough to never see it, and to us he has always been jovial and welcoming. No, mate, sorry. Don't know anything about these kidnappings, he replies in response to our questions. Although, if it interests you, I have heard some interesting rumors of something going down recently. Mr. Holmes himself was in earlier, as if I knew about my, any deals that had happened in the last few days. I told him one of my regulars, Toothy Ted, said he was approached last week to do a big deal of some kind. That's what Ted does, you see. He deals in stuff. Anything that hasn't come by the <clears throat> regular channels. He sat in... He sat in here smoking cigars with some posh-looking gent for a while, take talking it over. He didn't do the deal, though. I don't know why. Any idea where we can find him, Porky? Asked Wiggins. No, sorry, mate. Though if I remember right, I think he used to work near Southwark Bridge. Well, with a name like Toothy Ted, laughs Tinker, I guess we need to look for a guy with a lot of teeth. What? No. Porky frowns. Well, yeah, but not his own. He got that name because he used to be a dentist. He even invented his own toothpaste and got in into the chemist. I'm not sure anywhere stocks. Sorry. I'm not sure anywhere stocks it anymore, mind. Not since people found out what he was putting in it. And we get to circle the letter T. Oh. I actually get to do things. Right? Can I have that pen? Yeah. The other pen. The Yeah, I guess I'll use this one. So we get to circle the letter T. All right. Just because you mentioned cigar. It you're... does still work, Kat. I just want you to know. Oh, I didn't even try it. There is a miscellaneous um, here for high, uh, selling high quality cigars and cigarettes. Oh! She said there was a. Yes, yeah, so, uh, you couldn't cigars. know the brand, but. Um, okay, well, we get to circle. High quality cigars and cigarettes for the discerning smoker imported from colonies, colonies worldwide, 35WC. Okay. So Wait, it might be someone who frequented that, but. Interesting. Uh, we also know that that guy... But that wasn't a potential kidnapper, was it? That was not a socialite. But maybe he was approached by the guy. Yeah, yeah, there was someone in the room that smoked, that was smoking. Right? Well, it was him, Toothy, Toothy Ted, that was smoking the cigar, wasn't it? Or smoking the cigar with the guy? No, no, uh, no, they were just, I think they were just chatting. Because there was a person in her story, she said, I could smell smoke, and she's not a smoker. Yeah. And uh, so the governesses. Yeah. Um, okay, well. But we have a cigar shop. We do have a cigar shop. That would be pretty good. The bridge. Um, what, what was the name of the bridge? Did you happen to get that? 
The bridge that the money was supposed to be dropped off at? No, that... Uh, the one you just mentioned. The South, one I just Southwest mentioned. Bridge or something like that. Um, Didn't catch it. You read pretty fast. I know. I mean, did you write down... Uh, oh, it was it was 40. So that is 52 EC. I can always, that's why I can always go back. South Wark Bridge? It was, I believe, 52. I'm not even in the right section. EC. I think it was South Wark Bridge. Well, that's all the way over here. 52 EC. Um, yeah, South oh, Wark Bridge. I did. <laughs> that's where Toothy Ted would be, and he was the one who met with someone about... Some, but toothy, but toothy Ted didn't He's take. Got big stuff going on. So where's Southwark Bridge? Southwark Bridge. That would probably be one, maybe no, <clears throat> maybe twenty six EC, or. Um, I, would, I would think it's more one. Twenty six EC isn't in here, but True. and one EC isn't in here either. Here's the smoke shop. 35, okay. So, okay. Who, who would take, who would kidnap the governess, first of all? Because the, why, why the governess? Why not someone of the actual family? It could be the train family. I, I'm still, I'm still very much leaning towards someone in the train family because now we know they're not well off. Yeah. Um, the the husband said he was, but I'm guessing probably the cotton factory is not doing well, <coughs> and he's trying to get his fame back, or be like, ah, we were a family once. Or he just this is all money. reasonable. Because I mean, two thousand two thousand uh, monies was a lot back then. And that would also explain why he would have arranged or participated in the Dunsworthy kidnapping. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Especially maybe to get some art. So, let's see. Or just money. <clears throat> see, no one ever talks about the nature of that kidnapping or ransom or what it was. True. All we know is that someone was kidnapped. Oh, no, it was the the, the lady. Lady Dunsworthy, wasn't it? Mary. Yes. Okay. But a, no one says what the disposition of that so was. So, 2,000 U.S. dollars. This was in pounds, but... Uh, two thousand dollars in eighteen eighty-five to not modern day would be fifty-four thousand dollars. That's a lot. So. I'd send someone to college for a semester. <laughs> Depending on which college, you might get to go to a community college just for two semesters. <laughs> All right. Oh, he <clears throat> I I mean yeah the cigar place the thing that bothers me about the cigar going to the cigar place is we don't really know anything about it. No. Like we can't come in with a brand. We can't come in with. It would be a shot in the dark. Yeah. Which might pay off, but it's not very likely. Yeah. Um, the Dur Maybe going to the du Dursbury family? Dunsworthy. The Dunsworthy. I, I, yeah. It's fine. It's uh, Dunsworthy. Fine. The Dubery. To their house? The Dursleys. It's the Dursley That's family. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe they know something about who did it? They would. They should know something. They probably just know who did it. Or so at least can... get more details about that kidnapping. <laughs> Yeah. Duns, Dunsworthy. I mean, has anybody tried saying who did this to them? What? Has anybody tried asking them the, the <laughs> Dunsworthy? There's only one person in here. Lady Rosanna Dunsworthy. Was that her? Not the um, one who got kidnapped. No, no, no. She would not be the head of the house, but if she's the one we have the address for. 53 Southwest is where that's at. That's the only Dunsworthy in the London directory. <laughs> So, 53 Southwest. Same area. Yeah, it's same not, relative not area. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think it's worth it for potentially a couple reasons. Okay. What did I say? 53? Yep. 50. You know there's a back to those, right? Yeah, I don't want to write on the back. You're just going to keep wasting paper? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Are you ever going to put them up on the wall if there's something written on the back? That too. It's not in here. Okay. Well, that was worthless. So right. We're not going to find out anything about the Dunsworthy kidnapping through direct channels. What was the name of the um, the daughter? Mary. Mary. Mary Dunsworthy. Yeah. Well, that does not help us. Um, I think we need to go to, to the archives. Okay. Family and criminal histories. Yep. 
Okay. Yep, land records. Maybe we could find out something about if there's some like land dispute between the families. Which families? The train. Maybe any. We might be able to find some. Maybe there's some hostility between because it's it's it, or it was or maybe we go talk to the uncle Yale Lander <sighs> Land Land Lanyard I, Yale. I thought he wasn't in there or something. Oh, I didn't look him up. Oh. Yes, he is in here. Lawrence Yale. See, it bothers me that. The, 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 the idea that bothers me about some kind of a dispute is she was still treated nicely and then released. True. There, there doesn't seem to be any hostility and there was no intention of violence. They just want money and we can't get it, so we give up. I also yeah. feel like, I mean, these are her employers. If it was them, she would know their voices. Mm, that's a good point. Like, she wouldn't be like, who's that? She'd be like, what are you doing? That's true. Well, she could have arranged it and offered to split the ransom with them in some way. Mm. But then she wouldn't be reaching out to detectives to be like... To, to, to yeah, she, she feels unsafe, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. True. True, true, true. Unless they were playing the real... I mean, I agree it sounds like an inside job, but we don't know enough about the inside of the family. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, Lawrence Yell, is he in there? He is. Did you want to go talk to him? For some reason, I thought you looked him up and said he wasn't in there. Uh, no, the the Dewsburys or the Dewsberries, whatever, I already forgot. Douchebaggery. Douchebaggery, the douchebags. Um, the I don't know. Bag. I'm now kind of... I don't know. I always feel like the National Archives are never looked at, and then it's like, oh, Sherlock went there, and then he he's just like, oh, I found all everything I need to know. This is going to be the one time that we go there, and he's like, you guys are so stupid. Why the fuck? Yeah, they're the trains. They're a has-been family. You guys don't know the train. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys also were interested in going to see Jasper Meeks. Was I? For the medicine. I don't believe in medicine. I mean, I know you're you believe you're you're a Christian scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in prayer. Um. So, sixty sixty two wasn't there. We went sixty three sixty one. We also didn't go to Stratton Street where she was dropped off. True. And there's a bunch. There's a Piccadilly Hotel. There's also so 65 Northwest, maybe, where she was dropped off. So 64, 65 <coughs> Northwest. Um, I know anything about Cool, none of them are in here. So. Oh, good, good, good. Well, hey, you know what? That just... 26. Oh, um... Sorry. Nope! I need to be telling how many leads were that. Yeah, I thought you were writing those down. Well, I am writing them down, but I'm not, like, we're telling. We're at 45. <laughs> we are at... Uh, Maybe. So is Lee's the only thing we keep track of? Yeah, because how many? We'll know how many Sherlock does, and then we lose five points for each one we go over. Right. He probably did this in fucking three. He probably he probably was the kidnapper. He <laughs> <laughs> it was me. We're at four leads. I held up five hands, but that's because my thumb. <laughs> gotcha. I held up five hands. So interesting. I held up five hands. Uh, just keep moving. Well, you keep moving. The okay. art the art gallery opening. Yeah. But I don't see anything listed in here for an art gallery or any art galleries. Well, why don't we I'm just? Not sure what category they would Why be don't under. we go check out your best friend at the archives? Let's go give him a ring a ding. Okay. Ring a ding 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 ding. Ring a ding ding ding. Okay. Kenneth Duncan Train, born in what? 17 WC. I don't know what me. I'm tracking the leads for you. Kenneth Duncan Train, born in Leeds on 4th, February 1843, to Duncan Archibald Train and Sally Margaret Train, knee Yale. Knee Yale. <laughs> Married Letitia Wiss on 10th July 19, 1875. Two children, Duncan Matthew Train, born 18th September 8, 1879, and Clarence Elias Train. I'll give this to you so you can write it down if well, you want. I don't think we need to write down their whole genealogy. Born, uh, but so the fact that they're Yales might be important. Maybe. Uh, yes. Uh, two children, Duncan Matthew Train, born 18 September uh, 1879, and Clarence Elias Train, born 2nd August uh, 1881. So September 8th, 1879, and it is now 1885, so he is 6 years what? old. Letitia Viss, Weiss, born in London on uh, May 23rd, 1852, to Ivan Dominic Weiss and Anna Carmen Weiss, knee Jigger, Giger, Jiger. Geiger? It's G I G E R. Okay. I'm assuming knee was the wording for, like, previously that that was their names yeah. until they got married. Her, her former name. 
Wendy Sarah Sturton, born in Buxton on third on December third, eighteen forty four, to Mark Piper Sturton and uh, Gertrude Julia Sturton. She was uh, originally foreman. So is Wendy married? She would have to be, right? If have a has, husband. If she has a surname. Yeah. And Mary Ella Dunsworthy, born in London. Oh, they're related. Wait. Dunsworthy. Who? Who? Is that the, is that the family? Slow down. Dunsworthy. Say again. Yep. Mary Ella Dunsworthy. Who is you said she's related to who? Born in London on twenty on August twenty ninth eighth to Lord Augustus Clark Dunsworthy. Died uh he died on September tenth, eighteen eighty two, and Lady Rosala Annas Dunsworthy. Anias Dunsworthy, and she was a rayer. So do you have uh, a circled F? We no. don't. No. If not, you learn nothing else at Somerset House. Okay, remember that. We're gonna circle the F and then come back. I can circle it whenever I want. Interesting. So the Dunsworthy. So is there anything in there from from for Ryer? No, that no that. No. The name? Ryer, yeah. R Y or R I. Lady Rosanna Anias Dunsworthy, but maybe there's R E Y E R. R E Y. Thank you. Uh, and then yeah, no. We, no? Is we. there anything in there for Sturton besides Wendy? Because that the fact that it mentions that she was married, or she used to be a foreman. Um, nothing. No Sturton. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. S T U R. Maybe foreman. Maybe she went back to her original name. No one does that anymore. <laughs> Too expensive. Like you would know. You'll never know. Ever. No. Because we'll never get divorced. Me. Or just don't change your name when you get married. That was easy. That's all. That was very easy. I don't have to do any of the work. I mean, truly, you don't need to change your name. You do not. On Facebook and, and that's just... And there's actually a tiny pain about it. I can explain if you're interested. <laughs> because because Amy did change her name when we got married, and then when we got divorced, she didn't. Because it was and just you're kind like, of you a pain lazy to go Because you have to update your everything that it's attached you gotta get to. Your you your driver's license, license driver's social license. security, yeah. Re-register to vote, and yeah. every time from then on, have you ever under a different name? Yes. You gotta. Mm. When you renew your driver's license, you have to bring your divorce decree. Holy oh, really? Shit. Or or That's your annoying. marriage or your marriage license proving that you have this new name now. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. No. Nope. Hey, no no foremans. No foremans. Okay. Well, this is almost a useless directory. So nothing inherently weird about their birth. Births. <laughs> no, but family relations. Yeah, because it's Somerset House, all archives, births, deaths, marriages, wills, land records, and old criminal records. But it's weird that Dunsworthy's mentioned. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's the family relation, isn't it? Mary Ella Dunsworthy, uh, uh, born in uh, to Lord Augustus Clark Dunsworthy and Lady Ros Rosanna Anias Dunsworthy. There's no Dunsworthy's in the other names. Okay. But it is weird that that's, that's brought up. I mean, also we were just looking into the Dunsworthies as well, well. It's the subject of the case. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's 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 been it's it's related to the case. It's, right. It's very clear now. Right. The problem is, is we're Ugh. so now we need to investigate the kidnapping. Right. That's instead. what I'm trying to figure out. Is well, now maybe we should go talk to Lawrence. Lawrence. Yale. Huh. Yale, the uncle. Lawrence Yale, Kenneth Sanka. Oh. Sorry. Yale. I did not look up Yale. The founder of Yale University. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 62 Southwest. <clears throat> okay, where is all... We walk up to the large, imposing mansion on 62 Basil Street. However, despite their best efforts to sweet-talk the butler, including one of Wigan's most inventive and elaborate bluffs, which involves the Metropolitan Police, a chimney sweep, and an escaped llama, we are refused entry. An escaped llama? Great. Yeah, this is some bullshit Let's story. Let's go to the zoo. All right, we were not able to get into... to talk to the uncle. So that is pretty neat. 
Um, let's go to the questions. Yeah, let's just let's call it. Let's call it here. Even though we have zero answers as to who did it. Well, the thing is, until we know the questions, we don't know if we already have answers. <laughs> let's look up the questions, just not the answers. What if she was lying the whole time? <laughs> Yeah, she wasn't actually kidnapped. For attention, she's just. She, she could have arranged her own kidnapping. Oh, to try and get the get, get money. Get the money. Just she is the governess of the family, so yeah. she wouldn't know uh, intimate details about their finances. Oh yeah, she just might know. Oh, they're they he's, they say they're well off. Yeah, she'd just be taking care of the kids. Maybe want some more money, and then she was quietly released. And everything else is a uh, mm, is a red herring clue. Interesting. There's nothing in here about factories. There's nothing in because I was like maybe go to that guy's place of work. There was no one stabbed to death. Uh, I mean, we also haven't gone to the police hmm. to ask them what they know. They should be the last ones we go to. <laughs> Fuck the police. There were no items found during the investigation. No substances. Uh, we haven't talked to. The medical examiner, maybe, maybe, maybe the examiner. Meeks might know something. Maybe he went and he's like, "That kid's not sick." Well, yeah, maybe he knows something about the family because sure. I mean, your doctor knows a lot about you. So yeah, you said they pee examiner. a lot. They pee a lot. Like one time they brought in Natalie Market. How many times they peed? And I saw at least two. Well, so the medical examiner has performed autopsies. We don't have any dead bodies in oh. any of this. Well, we could give them one. Except the the mother who died. Oh my god, she probably died a while. Oh, no, no, she didn't die a while ago. Was... Three, uh, I think it was like three years ago. <gasps> or something. No, it was within a year, wasn't it? I think it was recent. Yeah, Mary... because he said it's been a tough yeah. time. Um, oh, the mother of, of the Train family, yes. yes. Yeah. I thought it was Lord Augustus Clark. He died in 1882. Yeah, three years ago. No. Well, yeah. that's good that he died three years ago. Good for him. So I don't know if the medical examiner would give us any useful information. Yeah. Be, just because... Can we get a hold of the chemist? So far, we're not aware of any dead bodies related to this. Yeah, can I see that? No. The yeah. chemist? Yes, the supplier of drugs. Can we talk to Sherlock? Well, we know that medicine was involved in all this. Yeah. Right, that's why I kind of... I was just thinking medical examiner, maybe. Mm. Yeah, except that... It does specifically say autopsies, yeah. but... Is there a doctor or just the chemist? Often people would just go to the chemist. Yeah. No, not need a prescription. Because this is before regulations. Yeah, it wasn't even, like, it yeah. wasn't even regulated back then. Now it's a class Yeah, before PDMP was, was created. Oh, baby, way before that. Way before that. Well, we know we're at least we're gunning for clue F somehow. <laughs> we need to circle the letter F. Right. Train family, um... Duncan and Clarence take over other. Ha There's no one else that's that's brought, that's like in in the train family that we can go talk to. I um, mean, maybe we should go talk to Scotland Yard. They're not going to pay. Let's release her. Take her back to the carriage. Yeah, dropped off. Well, didn't she Stratton. say that the police were contacted? But I, I saw didn't it was say in a they were really involved. Alley near Stratton. They might have. They might have investigated. But my guess is they wouldn't investigate <clears> yeah. because she was just returned. There was nothing happening. Yeah, yeah they kind of were like, ah, fuck it. Well, you're bad, but right? then again, they might have. And they might be having an ongoing investigation, and we're just not aware of it. Right. right. I mean, that, that could be worth it, but the chemist, there's a possibility there, too. Should we go see the librarian, see if you know anything? I'm just, I'm librarian amazed that there's fucking nothing near where she was dropped off. Well, if it's just a residential area. Yeah. You know, there's a park right next to it. Can't say there's not. Well, what would there be? Not nothing. Yeah, there's like nothing yeah, there. Yeah, what are you expecting? I don't know, someone to see her get dropped off? No, she <laughs> said it was always quiet. She was left in a city street, She's tied fine. and blindfolded. Yep, and they just kind of found her. Um, I don't know, who sells blindfolds? Because obviously... <laughs> yeah, I'm also amazed that the carriage wasn't in here. Yeah. That's Which makes me think it is a personal carriage. Mm -hmm. It would have to be, because these carriages are clearly... Uh, They're like the taxis. Well, sorry, yeah, it's central carriage stables, mm -hmm. which means, ta yeah, that is yep. their taxi. So it, is a pers so it has to be someone who but had access to it. Owns their own taxi business. No, and owns their own carriage. Or just their own. <laughs> you said there was a cigar place? Yeah, it's just mentioned. What is there it? There are actually several tobacconists, but there was one particularly mentioned here. Okay. 
Um, Amber and Company, 35 WC. 35. Yeah, it's interesting they would advertise. We need to have circled C. We can't even go there? Wow. I don't, I'm, I don't know if that counts as a lead, because we didn't find anything. We need, So we need C circled to be able to... Do we see Murray, criminologist? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, did we... I don't know. No. Do, you, do you have 22? No, we didn't see Murray because we wouldn't. Oh, well, what does it say? Analyzes. Oh, but there was nothing there. Right. Oh, so we did go there, but it was nothing. No, 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 no. There was nothing. There was no items to analyze. Uh, items and substances. Well, what if they. What. Did, did it. I mean, does it have to specifically say that there's an item? Like. I mean, no, but I mean, if you're. If she came to you, she's like, oh, I was kidnapped and I was dropped off. And it's like, okay, we have really nothing for him to analyze. DNA. Well, what about... Yeah, the, yeah, we're that... We're. What about, um, I mean, what she was tied up with in the blindfold? Okay, so there's a Times article wait, about it, wait, and wait, we wait. do have a reporter for the Times wait, wait, that we wait. can talk to. Hold on, we might be able to talk to Yale, after all. Because he's under a different name. He's been dead. No, uh, remember, um, it wasn't Porky, it was the... Mm -hmm, yes, the other guy. Mm -hmm. That, uh, I he see. said he had a racehorse. Um... The social columnist? Yeah, yeah. He said he yeah, Dang station? Bill? No. Um Yeah, he said he like that he had a he had a, a uh sports associations. Okay, there is uh lacrosse, nope, London rowing nope, mm. cricket, cricket, skating, riding club. Two mm. W two two N W. Well riding and racing are gonna be different horses, right. but there's a there's a weird connection there. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Royal Toxophilite Society, shooting sporting times. Ah, there's nothing there. Yep. Uh, public houses. Oh, okay. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I try to avoid going to him if at all, if at all possible. Because then he gives you all of his clues and you Pretty end much. up losing 75 points. <laughs> right. Okay. This well, one's weird. It's so police. It is. I, like, I feel like we have nothing to go off of. Well, police. General I, information. I'm with There him. is an article yeah. in the Times, so we, we have a reporter. We should probably go talk to the police. Or the reporter, Or yeah. we should just go. The reporter might know more than they bothered printing in this tiny little column. Oh. Or they're going to be stingy. You know how they are. Yeah. There is also a... Not a, back then. A medical examiner. Yep. But again, that's that's. The I don't. Sir Joseph. Well, because there's a coroner. Oh, is it? Yes. What, what's is his? the medical examiner? Yes, for Meeks. Oh, 38 EC. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's a possibility, but it seems really strained. Right. Because what is he gonna examine? Yeah. And then the bridge was Southwark Bridge. So I'm wondering about Henry. Let's do it. All right. 30, 30, EC. 30 EC. 30 EC. Wow, that's quite a ways. Maybe we should yeah. go all that go far. <laughs> Henry Ellis is a middle-aged man with a square jaw and a very short, well-kept beard. So, you work for Sherlock, he says, looking at us over a pair of spectacles. He has given me some excellent material in the past, and I'm always glad to assist in his inquiries. We are investigating the kidnapping of Miss Sturton, says Wiggins. I wrote on both that and the Dunsworthy kidnapping, Ellis tells us. The main details in each case were that the victim was taken into a carriage against their will, held by the kidnappers, for a week in one case and a day in the other, and then they were released tied and blindfolded on a city street. The detectives in charge were not willing to release any more information to the press. If you want more than that, you'll have to go and try your luck with the officials. Damn it. <laughs> so, probably to Scotland. Yard so, both point. taken by carriage. Yep. Mary was for a week. Same, exact same MO, except the timing. Yep. And again, no I wonder, one's saying, I wonder, no one's saying if the kidnapping was successful or even I was if it about, was I was about to say, I wonder if the week was because they got their money or the day was because they got their money. I think I think Mary was would have to be the week, right? Well, yeah. I was thinking it was just wasn't it just one or two if days? Was, didn't we say if she was taken on Monday and returned on Tuesday, then it was just a day. Oh yeah, well, who said true. that? Uh, paper. Who says she was? Kidnap on Monday, Monday. returned Tuesday afternoon. Okay, so she was the day. So Wendy would be the week. No, Wendy's the one that got kidnapped for a day. The the Dursbury Duns, mentioned Dunsworthy. Dunsworthy. That's Wendy. No, Wendy is st Wendy st certain is the governess. Right. So that would be the week. No. No. Wendy certain the governess was kidnapped for one day. Oh, okay. The governess of the train family. I thought you were reading about the Dunsworthy people. Uh, it's the same article. 
Gotcha. So the Dunsworthy kidnapping was a week. Okay. But no one says if it was for ransom or what the final right. disposition was. And he was. said if you want more, go to the official. So we're going to Scotland Yard. 13 Southwest. 13. We're going to get like all our... our oh, okay. Yep. <clears throat> Inspector Lestrade is a lean, ferret-like man whom we have heard Holmes described as energetic and tenacious but lacking in imagination. When we arrive, he is busy reading papers on his desk and does not see us until we are practically standing over him. Oh, good grief! He says, noticing our presence. Dr. Watson, and you've brought some children with you? Baker Street Irregulars. This is Inspector Lestrade, says Watson. Lestrade, these are the Irregulars and their leader, Mr. Wiggins. Very good, says Lestrade, but what are, what are you all doing it at my desk? We know Holmes has helped you in the past, Inspector, says Wiggins, and <clears throat> I'm sure you've helped him too. Thought you might be able to help us? We're looking into the kidnapping of Wendy Sturton. She thinks your investigation into the case may have slowed a little. Lestrade guffaws. Well, she is back safe and sound, is she not? Oh, yes, Inspector, replies Wiggins, but the kidnappers didn't get their money, and she's worried they may come back. Lestrade shakes his head. I don't give a shit. No. <laughs> the thing is, Wiggins, my lad, kidnapping is a specialized crime and a difficult one to pull off. The capture and release can be relatively straightforward, but it's getting the payment that's the hard part. You need to have judged how much to ask for, and then you need a means of collection that is planned so it won't lead the, lead the police or anyone else to your door. The first time, with Mary Dunsworthy, these kidnappers got their money. Okay. Finally. Foolishly, Lady Dunsworthy did not come to us until after she paid the ransom. The second time, with Wendy certain, they weren't so lucky, and they realized they'd picked a bad target, I reckon. It will, it will have given them a fright, and that'll be the last kidnapping they undertake. You mark my words. Do you have any more leads you could share with us? I've sent an offer to see if our informants know anything, but I doubt they will. Mr. Murray has the notes and other items, of course. Now I do have to get on with more important matters. Thank you, Inspector, says Wiggins, doffing his cap. Tours... Twere a pleasure to meet with you, and I'm sure we'll meet again. Wiggins grins, but from Lestrade's expression, we infer that he does not share our leader's enthusiasm. And no F. Mr. Murray. Okay, so here's what's going on now. The first kidnapping was successful. Yep. The Dunsworthy kidnapping After was waiting successful. for a week. A week. So, Ms. W Ms. Wendy Sturton? Yep. Uh, our, our hirer used exactly the same M.O. herself mm -hmm. in order to allay suspicion on the successful kidnappers. Interesting. And she knew, so, but she would have had to have known the financial situation would not have appealed. So... Because she actually had to be gone for two days, for a day. Yeah. So she couldn't be there when he was trying to arrange payment and couldn't do it. So it has to be the wife, the, the La, 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 Latisha. La, yeah, Latricia or yeah. something. Latisha. They conspired together. Okay. And the entire story about the kidnapping was made up. She just went and hid for a day, and then Latisha contacted her saying, "Give it up. It's not going to happen." Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. This is this is a little more. Um, TV and movie plot. Than, well, here's then then might be. I I oh man, I don't know because I think it would be Wendy acting by herself if we were going that route because I think the wife would know that they can't get the money. And so I wouldn't think that the wife would know the finances of the house. That would not that would not have been proper at the time. Especially if he was trying to appear richer than he actually was. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm thinking. It was just Wendy to be like, oh, you know, they say they're well off all the time, so... It could be, but then how would she know that they couldn't get the money so quickly? Well, they didn't. Maybe she... Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. With the... Because she was released almost as soon as, well, we can't come up with the money. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally the next day. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, let's take her... Let's just drop her off. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So she would have had to have some inside information. So the kidnap and the kidnappers got scared because they were like, "Oh shit!" You well, know, there were no kidnappers. Oh, okay. That's my theory now. Hmm. Interesting. She just—they conspired. She just left, went off and hid somewhere for a day, and then Letitia contacted her, saying, "Oh my God, the whole plan is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> just give it up quickly. We need you back at the house." Oh uh, yeah. Because they both have motive for wanting the money. 
neither of them, I would think, would be aware of the, the financial situation. They would suspect that there would be more money in the house and in the family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or they, or they were all conspiring as a, as a, the train family to try and get the money from the uncle. Potentially. And the uncle, and the uncle, and the uncle's like, "Fuckers, I don't, I can't drop that. I don't have fifty four thousand just lying around. Uh, all my money's on my racehorse." <laughs> I'm afraid that this is plot line has been done a few times. So if it ends up being something like this, I'll be a little disappointed. But this could be none of it. But like, yeah, she was obviously kidnapped by the Wiggins gang. It's <laughs> <was> like what? <laughs> While Bill Hickok was in town. <laughs> All right. But that's that's suddenly my working theory. Okay. It's not a good one, but it's better than any of you have. <laughs> Kat hasn't given us any theories. She's, I'm taking notes. She's too busy writing everything down I know, right? to think about it. But she has all the information, so she should have. Be like, aha, I see all. Well, we know there's at least two more key clues that we're missing. Right. The Y. The and C the and the F or something like that. Okay. Well, and we've got a clue. The D is it that we've never actually used? The T. Yeah. The T. Yeah, I don't know. But here's the other thing. She said she liked to go for walks in the park. Mm -hmm. There's also Hyde Park, where she near near where she lives. Yeah. Or whatever this area is, but I forget. It, yeah. It's not oh, Green park. park. Okay. Green, Green Park. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you want to examine the scene? The park. Yeah. Hyde Park is large. Yeah, it's pretty big. Might be able to hide out there. So, yeah. All right. Let's try Hyde Park. Shouldn't they have examined the scene like the first? Well, there's thing? two in Hyde Park, but you want to go to the central area? Yeah, just kind of like the big one. Oh, that's just a right. tree. We enter Hyde Park from the southeast. The path underfoot glimmers with a light frost, and we wrap our coats and scarves tight about us to ward off the cold. Consult the map of Hyde Park and choose where in the park you wish to go. Read the relevant numbered entry. Um. N95 does not count as a lead, but each location in the park counts as a lead. Oh, okay. So, oh, so there's 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 a park here. Gotcha. Okay. So we have uh, two. Okay. So number one is the Humane Society. Number two is Plant Nursery. Three is the Lodge. Four is a police station, and five is Gunpowder Magazine. Now, if you are suspecting that she hid somewhere, the Lodge makes the most sense. It does. And she frequented her walks, and the, the wife was like, I don't know how she fucking does it with the cold. And it's like, well, it's because she's probably going to the lodge to just get, get wasted. Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah, yes, wasted. Get loud numbed up. <laughs> get numbed up. Go to her loud numbed den. What do you think? Is it worth checking the lodge? Cat doesn't give a shit. She's checked out whenever we I, started. I think, I think this one is just obscure. <laughs> I right, guess we can check out the lodge, yeah. I Although the police station might have some other information. Yeah. I mean Or I mean we could we can kind of just eat the leads and just I mean, we're try to figure it nine. out. Are we at nine? Yeah. Ninety five didn't count. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, but this we're going to go in there, so <laughs> the lodge. The lodge, alright. The the lid. The lid the lid. The lid. The lid. The lid. Okay. The, lo the Keeper's Lodge is an imposing building flanked with columns of white stone. We knock at the door, but no one answers. Peering through a window, we can see some desks scattered with papers, but no sign of any people. We move down the side of the lodge into the backyard. A carriage is parked by some stables where three horses send white clouds of breath into the air and stamp their hooves. Through a back window of the lodge, we see a dining room with a wooden table and chairs set in front of a grand fireplace. Oh. Dude, I think, you, I think you nailed it. I think you got it. She went there. She went there. See that? Um, well, who could use it? That's a good question. Yeah, or, or who owns it? Oh, there's also a nursery. I, I think I did read that the plant nursery. What about it? Yeah. Was oh, it a nursery where you take care of kids? No, baby. Uh, yes, but not a plant nursery. Plants. <laughs> plant nursery is where you grow, grow plants. If it's a plant nursery, then yeah, it would yeah. be. They're, they're, you're they're on the raising right up track. saplings. They are baby plants. So. <laughs> yes, you're that's right. What, that's what I meant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the baby nursery applies to both. Yeah. Okay. But in this case, I don't hear any connection to plants. Little baby plants. Um, I'm ready for questions. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm down. For, I, I think we should just dig around the the northwest, mm -hmm. like the the park. Okay. And then and then go to questions. Police station may know something about the movements of people. Okay. 
A lone policeman at a desk introduces himself as Constable. Does this count as a lead? Each, each of these will count as a lead, yeah. This is the second one yeah. in Hyde Park. Hiya! Okay. A lone policeman at a desk introduces himself as Constable Tyrrell. Wendy, Miss Sturton, comes by here on occasion, he says in response to our questions, although she prefers walking away from the paths and the trees around the gunpowder magazine whenever she has whatever whenever she has come by, I think, and I hope I am not immodest by saying this, that she is always pleased to find me on duty. If I have the time, I am very glad to sit and talk with her a while, and I believe we both enjoy each other's company. Uh, yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> What kind of things do you talk about? About the park, about things she has seen on her walks, about the matters of the day. We've also discussed the changes that have occurred over the years, from the creation of the Serpentine to the new police house. How did the cha- Oh, there was actually a new new Scotland Yard right there. Oh. Anyway. Uh, how did the changes in the park happen, asked Watson. Who makes the decisions? Various people. Simon Pink Pinkney oversees building operations. The royal keeper of Hyde Park is Sir Colin Pickwick. Though he is rarely here and chooses not to reside in the Keeper's Lodge, and Sir Colin's son and daughter, Patrick and Grace, help him manage park affairs. What shifts were you on around the 16th of November when she was kidnapped? Tyrrell's expression darkens. That was a strange in incident, was it not? That week I was working the afternoon shifts, 12 till 7, and Constable Ponsford was working the morning shifts, 6 till 12. As I recall, I had asked to switch with Ponsford for that week, but he was adamant that he keeps the morning shifts. Thank you, Constable. Circle letter L. Aha! Got we us an got an L. L. We got L and T. It's going to spell out who did it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant. Lieutenant Tyrrell. <laughs> okay. Are we doing Gunpowder Magazine? Yeah. As we approach... Because he said he, she, li he likes, she likes to walk around that. I also wrote down that that guy was adamant that he kept the day shifts because they're probably connected then. Right. Because um, sure. what time was she kidnapped? In the morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that. On Monday. Did you, did you catch the name of the guy? Ponsford. Ponsford, like yep. That. It was in the morning? It just says on Monday in the paper. Okay. I don't, I don't remember. I think she mentioned it was in the morning. I'm pretty positive. Her story. Mm -hmm. All right. As we approach the magazine, Watson explains what such a building is for. It is a gunpowder store. The military positions them across the country in strategic locations. They are made to be secure, dry, and cool with very thick walls and are often built in wooden locations. The trees help to absorb the blast in the case of an explosion, which, of course, is an ever-present hazard. We stop at the mention of explosions, and Wiggins looks at Watson in disbelief. Explosions, Doctor, he says. And they have one of these in the middle of the park? More than one, I think, answers Watson. This is one of the most isolated spots in central London. Even if an explosion were to happen with the walls and trees, the range of the destruction would be limited. Thinking that, although limited, the range of destruction would be wide enough to encompass anyone standing next to it. We follow Watson with some trepidation towards the magazine. <laughs> it is a hexagonal building with no windows and a very sturdy-looking door, which is locked. Next to the door, the words Gunpowder Magazine are carved in the stone, and ivy creeps up to the building's midpoint. This looks old, observes Wiggins. Is it still used? I think not, says Watson. I'd say it was built at least a century ago, and I see no signs of any guards. But someone has visited, says Wiggins. There are many shallow wheel tracks coming from the west. It looks like a small cart has made regular trips here over the past few months. He turns around and takes a few steps. And over here are men's footprints and a set of more recent wheel marks, wide and deep. A large wagon came to the door and then turned and went back the same way. And what's this? He picks something uh, from the ground near the door of the magazine. Looks like an expensive brand, he says, holding up a cigar for us all to see. It is almost complete, but the end is charred, indicating it had been lit and briefly smoked. From the state of it, it must have been laying in the dirt for a few days. And I reckon this place must be out of use, Wiggins continues, tucking the cigar in his shirt pocket. Unless whoever smoked this doesn't know what happens when you mix cigars and gunpowder. Circle letter C. Oh, yeah. We definitely should have gone there first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, I was like, Hyde Park? That doesn't really sound... No, she just takes walks there. That doesn't sound like the Chris. Yep. Scene of the crime. So there was, okay. there was a conspiracy, but I yes. think that she was yeah, a part of it. A I think she was in on it. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense now because I was like, I don't see how you guys are getting. Or, she, it was a copycat, but she wasn't involved in it. She was kidnapped with the same mo, so that the the, the other new kidnapper could blame the other guys. Everyone would suspect them. Kind of like a hey, they did it. We can do it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Either way. What was the that guy's name? That guard. Ponsford, the one who, yeah, one of the Ponsford. 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 And who was a cigar smoker from way back when? Well, that was that was your expensive guy. No, I was just 
Yeah, but that we need the leather C. Right. To go to go in there. Oh, the um, the the tobacconist. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case. Yep. Maxwell Ponsford is twenty six Southwest, so we can talk to him and be like, "Why do you want that shift so bad?" He probably won't tell us anything. Not if we unless we. What the fuck do you know? He he might not, but you never know. Um, well, let's go talk to the tobacconist because we have a special. Letter yeah. Her. See, if she was never actually kidnapped, then there's no reason to have a carriage. Because there, there are no that witnesses to the carriage. There's just her claim. Yeah. yeah. That is true. <clears throat> well, let's go to the tobacconist. What was it again? Um, the tobacconist, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Ember Company, 35 WC. 35 WC. Um, WC, it's further in the back, I think. Yep. Do you have a circled C? We do! Okay, read. The man behind the counter at Amber & Co. examines the partly smoked cigar we found in Hyde Park. We do sell cigars like this, he says. But we have the very high cost. Sales are limited. These cigars are rare and subject to very high import tax. <clears throat> West Indies tobacco wrapped in banana leaf. Could you perhaps tell us the names of anyone who buys these cigars? Asked Wiggins, hopefully. A few people have a regular order with us, he says, glancing down at the list behind the desk. The names here are Sir Francis Clarendon, Oswald Mason, and Stefan Kraust. But many other gentlemen purchase these from us, and I'm afraid we will have no record of those transactions. So we got names on who might smoke. Yep. Now this could obviously have nothing to do with the kidnapping. Yep. <laughs> could just be one of those silly little extra bonus questions to help us yeah, get but, some points. But we're not bad. allowed to go there until we got the cigar clue. Right. Mm -hmm. that, you know what it is? Is It's probably the kid who's smoking the cigars and that's why he's coughing so much. <laughs> God, that'd be, that'd be fucking dumb. <laughs> Six-year-old kid. Smoking Maxwell Ponsford is one that I'm thinking. And then what was the name of the the guard, the other, the other policeman that Lestrade, who th she thought liked her. No, 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 no. Like the the Lestrade mentioned that there was another officer on the case that we might oh. be able to go to. I don't remember that. Uh, Scotland Yard. Uh, great. Scotland Yard was thirteen SW. Okay, so let me um, see if I can find that real quick. Thirteen SW, right here. It was um. Okay. Um, Murray. Mr. Murray. That's not anyone we have, right? So, Murray. Sounds familiar. But right? Everything starts to sound familiar. Right. Yeah, right. M-U-R-R. -R. Uh, okay, so we have H.R. Two. Murray, criminologist. Oh. Ah, okay. <laughs> 22 Southwest. And then there's also Mortimer Murray. So we got two Murrays. Well, the criminal... Oh, well, may, he says he has stuff. Oh, well, maybe if he we had informed. gone there, they probably have... Maybe, maybe we gave him the cigar or something. I don't know. Yeah, so 22 Southwest. Mm -hmm. Let's go to him first, because he's one of our guys. Analyzes all items and substances. There were fucking letters. Because <laughs> that's what's showing. It. Wait, this is actually a pretty long one. Oh, okay. I have met this Mr. Murray once before, says Watson, as we arrive at the criminology laboratory. An insightful fellow, if a little eccentric... We enter the laboratory to find an old man hunched over a desk, studying a bowler hat and a dead pigeon with a magnifying glass. He looks up as we approach and peers at us through wisps of unkept white hair. I know you, he says, pointing at Watson. A medical man and a friend of Mr. Holmes. You are correct, Mr. Murray. I am Dr. Watson, and these are some other friends of Holmes, who go by the name of the Baker Street Irregulars. Murray studies us intently. What a fascinating collection of misfits, he says. Fascinating. Thank you, Mr. Murray, says Wiggins, deciding to take the comment as a compliment. I'm Wiggins, and we're here to see if you can tell us anything about these kidnappings. Ha, ah, says Murray. I see. Interesting stuff, Wiggins. Or Wagons. It's Wiggins, sir. What? Oh, well, firstly, we have the notes, which you can see here. So here are the notes that are pretty cool. So <laughs> we have... Damn it, we lost all of <laughs> We have Miss Certain leave 2,000 pounds in a sack on the north bank under the new Putney Bridge at dawn tomorrow, and she will be returned to you unharmed. Well, she was returned unharmed anyway. Yeah. We have Mary uh, leave 2,000 pounds in a sack under the first uh, arch of Richmond Bridge at dawn on 1st September, and she will be returned unharmed. Mm -hmm. The writing is different. Mm -hmm. 
Both are coarse parchment paper, Murray continues. Then we have two similar red scarves, though this one from the first kidnapping is cotton, and the one from the certain kidnapping is a mixture of cotton and silk. And we have the rope, used in each case to tie the hands of the victim behind her back. Again, there are differences. In particular, they differ in thickness. And also, look at the ends. He holds two pieces of rope in front of us. One is more frayed than the other, remarks Wiggins. Good eye, wag Good eye, wagons! There could be other causes for that, but it is likely that the instrument used to cut the rope was different in each case. What does Inspector Lestrade think of this? asks Watson. He thinks a scarf is a scarf, replies Murray, and a rope is a rope. And you may be right. I would be very surprised if the evidence from two crimes be the same perpetrator were ever to match precisely. Hmm, anything else? Ah, yes, one more thing. Some bright young officer stationed at the train's house sought to take a sample of mud from Miss Thurton's shoes when she returned after being freed. I can't remember his name, but he may have learned something from your Mr. Holmes. I know Holmes takes an interest in exactly these kind of details, so I sent a description of the chemical composition of the soil on to him. Lestrade wasn't interested. Do you have a circled C? We do! How curious that it is only partly smoked, says Murray, when we show him the cigar. And this looks like an expensive brand. A tobacconist would be able to tell you more. Of course they can. Which Let's right? go to the tobacconist. <laughs> huh. Okay. Okay. So, again, I'm thinking copycat. You think? Yeah. Yeah? I'm not... I, I don't know whether or not she would be part of it. Yeah. But somebody in the family was, because somebody in the family communicated. They don't have the money. Mm, you're right. You are correct. So I think we have to combine our... We have Miss Sturton leave 2,000 pounds in the sack on the north bank under... Yeah, it is different handwriting under the new Putney Bridge at Dawn... If it, yeah, because the handwriting would be the same if it was the same exact... But it was almost the same wording... It was, yes. So it was somebody who knew that note from the previous crime. Yes. And a, yes. Which points to that uh, yeah. officer. Two different bridges. That was enamored with her. Mmm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I think the last one we should do, because what, that's going to put us at like 15 leads? <laughs> 14. 14. If we do one more, it would put us at 14? Okay. I think we talked to the officer that wanted that. The sample? Yep. No, 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 the officer that wanted that position. Ah, uh, day shift. Yeah, Maxwell Ponsford. Ponsford. Twenty six Southwest. Man, we're having such a better time than the last time we did a game like this. <laughs> you mean the last detective game? Yep. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Constable Ponsford has an oval face and a bushy brown beard. As he answers the door, he removes the smoking stub of a cigar from his mouth and pushes it into an overflowing ashtray on the sideboard. Next to the ashtray is an open green box full of expensive-looking cigars. We are working with Sherlock Holmes and <clears throat> Inspector Lestrade, says Wiggins, and would like to ask you about Miss Wendy Sturton. Do you know her? Yes, Ponsford replies. I've only spoken to her a couple of times. My colleague, Constable Tyrrell, has conversed with her regularly. A report stating she'd been kidnapped went round the stations earlier this week. Why are you asking about her? We're helping with the kidnapping investigation. We were told you were on shift in the Hyde Park Police House on the morning of November 16th. Well, Ponsford pauses and thinks. Yes, I was. And did you see Mr. Pauses. Pauses and thinks. Yes. He knows he's on the day shift all the time. Oh, right. And did you see Miss Sturton that day? We understand she used to walk by there most mornings. Did she? I... He pauses, think again, and then something seems to occur to him. For a brief moment, his eyes widen before his expression settles back into a stern composure. Sorry, I don't remember, he continues. I'm not sure I can be of much help. You must excuse me. I have some paperwork to file. That was strange, says Watson as we walk away. He was suddenly keen to be rid of us. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it was him. He was smacking that booty! Mm, probably not. <laughs> oh, I was. Yeah. And so they have physical evidence, which could have been faked, that she was genuinely kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Knew her routine. But... So... He requested to remain on the day shift? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have our kidnapper. Yeah. <laughs> right? It is really exciting when you when you find out, like, oh, yeah, he really wanted that, that day shift really bad, made sure that I wasn't on it, he wouldn't switch with me, and then we go to him and we're like, hey, where were you? And he's like, mm, I'm just... Mm, what what did I... Did I really want mm. that shift? I don't remember. When was it? Uh, <laughs> last night at exactly this time? Was he part of the investigation? What do you mean? The... the Sorry, the governess's kidnapping investigation. I don't think so. They said he's the 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 matron. The, the patron said he f that they contacted the police. Right. 
while they were still trying to gather up the money. Yeah, I don't remember. Um, yeah, the 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 train family contacted the police immediately. Mm -hmm. um, the the others Dingleberries didn't, didn't until afterwards. Didn't until they until they already paid. But what I'm thinking is so if he was investigating. Or if he had information about the investigation, then he might know that they are not going to be able to pay the ransom. Right. And then call it off. Yeah. I mean, he would also know, oh, hey, she comes by here every morning. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe got information from his colleague. Hey, mm -hmm. you guys are talking a lot. She's got some big baboombas. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And he's like, yeah, it is. She's a nice girl. Yeah, I'm a kidnapper. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Um... Yeah, he and then the fact that they had a carriage in the back mm -hmm. of the yeah, lodge. access to the carriage. Yep, um, fresh carriage tracks, men's <clears throat> footprints. Mm -hmm. uh, men's if footprints he, in blood. She would have been carried. Right. Um, the cigars are interesting because there was one left over by the uh, the gunpowder mm -hmm. um, place. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a list of people who. Did smoke those, mm -hmm. um, for what it's worth. Yeah. And then, so they would have known one family. They would have known, if they were part of the police at Hyde Park, they would have known about the mm -hmm. previous one, so they could have commented that. It's not the same rope. It's not the same scarf. Mm -hmm. It's not the same handwriting. Mm -hmm. But it's all very, very close. The ropes mm -hmm. were even cut with different tools, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe garden shears or something. <laughs> could have been, so if it's yeah. it's a park. Um, because there was a nursery, a plant, okay. a baby nursery. There's just... broke into the baby plant nursery. Um, I think, I mean, I don't understand the nature of the questions that were going to be asked about this to demonstrate our knowledge. It's going to be similar to Deadline, but I'm, stuff like that. Yeah, but I'm comfortable with what, uh, personally, I'm comfortable with what we know and just seeing what, how the questions unfold. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to questions? The, the one, uh, the one that I'm not convinced of either way is whether or not... Uh, sorry, Wendy Sturton was actually part of the kidnapping or was genuinely kidnapped. Yeah. I'm starting to think she was genuinely kidnapped. I think so, too. Um, I, I still am definitely thinking that she was legitimately kidnapped. I think I think too many too many things lead to people knowing a lot about her, her you know, who she routine, worked for, yeah. her routine, that they'd be able to do it without her just being like, hey, I want some. I mean, because why? If she, if, if she has a nice job, mm -hmm. then why ruin that? And I think it was something based off what the wife said, that she genuinely cared for the kids. Yeah. So, okay. are, are we going to questions? Sure. All right, Kat, rip up another piece of paper. Okay. Sorry, I was drawing the baby plane. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Very oh. nice. All right. All right. Oh. Number one, who kidnapped Wendy Sturton? Um, Primarily Ponsford. that. Ponsford, right? That's who we're going for. Police, for, police guy. <laughs> Why? Is question number two. Money. Do we extort money. For, uh, for, the, for the ransom. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so know. the fact that that's a question makes me think we missed something. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, well, you're always gonna feel like that with this game. It's yeah. Thing, so for ransom money. And then question number three is, what was Constable Ponford's involvement? Oh, the kidnapper. Uh, either kidnapper or conspirator. Yeah, I'm thinking he was like he might have been the informant of the actual kidnappers. To give him the animal. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking that he probably isn't the kidnapper. Yeah, but we already guessed that. I mean, we can easily go back and change it. <laughs> and then question number four is, what deal was being done? So I'm thinking it might be a family thing between, like, between the actual trains and the police. In the police, and in this particular. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I maybe. I know nothing about any deal. Right. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe something on. So if we had had 15 more. Who leads. did it? And we said Ponsford. That's where we're, yeah. So we did not get much. And then why we said to extort money? Yeah. Just, yeah, ransom. What was Constable Ponfer's involvement? And then what deal was being done? Uh, my suspicion was he was possibly the only kidnapper. Yeah. But there were a lot of, there were a lot of people who talked, and we were forgetting about the woman 
Which woman? Yeah. Remember the woman that talked to her? The soft voiced person. So I think oh. the con I think oh okay, hold on. I think the constable was there because he had he had a bunch of cigars cigars. Yeah. And she remembered some but then he had was, access to the park facilities. Yeah. Um, but then there was a woman's voice <clears throat> that. Um, Shit, that, maybe it was the whole park. Well, if she was legitimately kidnapped, then we can believe her story. If she was in on it, then it could all be made up. Right. Um, so now these questions are leading back to she kidnapped herself with the help of the police. Yeah, with with the people in Hyde Park, those police in Hyde Park. Yeah. Not Scotland Yard. Yeah. So, I'm going to go back. No, it wouldn't be both of them. Hmm? It wouldn't be both of them. It would just be that one officer, Constable. Not the desk guy. Well, maybe the desk guy was kind of like, oh, hey, like trying to warm her, butter her up, get her the... And let's get her. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. He seems a little too innocent for that. I definitely don't think it's Ponsford who kidnapped her. Okay. Specifically. I think it was... Let's see. I mean, it was definitely a couple guys. Um... I think it's it, probably someone in the train family. Okay. But. Then that goes back to to try to get money for the medicine for the kid. If we were going with why, yeah. And what deal was being done, maybe a 50-50 split of the money. Some kind of a split between yeah. the conspirators. I do not see us doing well. Yeah. This, this seems so like then we go to the lot. second series, which is who was the buyer in the deal. Oh, shit. Ah. Now... <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there was a deal to buy from. Right. <laughs> oh wait, no. It was whoever Ted the Tooth or Toothy Teddy. Was Te talking to, or... Toothy Ted. Unless the whole thing was to buy a bunch of cigars. <laughs> oh, they, yeah. No, I think actually what what because I remember them saying about something about the tobacco how it was like expensive material. Mm -hmm. That'd be fucking weird. Yeah. All right, well, six, what is wrong with little Duncan Train? He's got the consumption. I'm going to be mad if we go to the fucking, <laughs> if the medical examiner tells us something. All right, so now that we know what we're looking for, let's go back to the medical <laughs> I am just curious, 38 EC? Yeah. He's never had a cough. If it was a, a critical clue we missed. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um... 38. No. No, it is all about deaths. Okay. I mean, but we easily could have looked up, like, a hospital or, like, a doctor. Yeah, but then that's kind of random. Yeah, then you have to go we don't have every a, you know, we got a lead to down. go to this tobacconist. Yeah. Right. Instead of the other ones listed. Right. Cause, well, I mean, because she was walking to the doctor's office, right? Was she? Oh, or no, she, she was, was walking to get medicine. Walking to the, the chemist. chemist. So, chemists. I mean, there, there aren't... Oh, there are chemists in here. Yep. Abrecht & Co., which is up in... Oh. Yeah, it would be something nearby. Yeah, that's the only one nor nearby. I am just kind of genuinely curious. 32 Northwest. That's not in here, so it wouldn't be there. I mean, there's nothing in the south... Oh, there's another one. John Taylor, 72 Northwest. That's not in here either. I don't fucking know. Me either. <clears throat> uh, what is wrong with little Duncan Train? Nothing, he fakes his cough. So, um, I did lose track after <laughs> I thought a good smack wouldn't cure. <laughs> Any, so Ponce's role, and then what was the other one after that? Oh, what deal was being done? What deal was being 50, done, 50 who split. was the buyer? Yeah. <laughs> are those bonus questions, or are those core? Second series, the, the first four are first series okay. questions, the next four are bonus. Okay, then the next one. Yeah, so who so was the what buyer? deal was being done was a core question? Yes. <laughs> Missed it. Second series, who was the buyer in the deal? Uh, if Duncan. The train. Sherlock Holmes. Well, the buyer. The buyer of what? <laughs> well, we don't know the deal, so we don't know. Yeah, that's true. Putting down the trains, and then what was wrong with Duncan? Yeah, what is wrong with little Duncan train? I don't... He, yeah, he has consumption. <laughs> and then... You know how the consumption just comes and goes. What is the story behind his illness? That's, that's a big question. That's the last question. Duncan's illness. Yeah, what's the story behind it? He's being slowly poisoned by the governors. Oh my god. That'd be fucked up. And That'd be a wild story if she was slowly poisoning her son to then get money. No, by the governess. No. Oh, by Wendy? Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, you think Wendy's like evil in all this? Well, what she's if, evil enough to fake her own kidnapping. If we're yeah. <laughs> what if Duncan is just really addicted to laudanum? I mean, let's go into the answer. That makes sense. Can I put that yeah. down? Duncan's addicted to drugs. I'm gonna write it. That's our best guess, but uh, we wouldn't have even known anything was wrong with Duncan even, if we hadn't read the question. We're not even fucking close. Oh, uh, on anything? Addiction. You're telling me that we're not right. That Duncan's addicted to opioids, and that's why he's getting extorting his family. <laughs> what is it? Lay it down. We were so fucking off. Oh, oh my just... god, the whole thing was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Duffy's in the shower. Patrick Pickwick and his sister Grace Al Alend are the people who kidnapped her. Yeah, I knew that. Two, to prevent her from observing them doing an illegal deal at the old gunpowder magazine in Hyde Park. Hey, I remember we were hearing, at the right side. I remember hearing Pickwick, but I don't remember from where. Was that the person that was talking to... Oh no, we didn't know who was... He was bribed by Grace and Patrick to ignore the deal, which was which was taking place during his morning shift on 17th November. Okay. And, uh, what was it? The why? What deal, what deal was being done? A large stock of illegally imported, uh, possibly stolen, high-quality cigars from the West uh, Indies were being sold. Okay. Well, Got one. Okay. Did we get that one? Uh, yeah, sure. Sort of. <laughs> Second series. Who was the buyer? Professor Moriarty. That Little bitch. <laughs> Toothy Ted, who gives Moriarty's name, is mentioned by Porky Shinwell. He can be located by visiting a chemist near Southwark Bridge. Toothy Ted gave Moriarty's name? If we had talked if to him. If we had talked to him. <laughs> oh, I thought we couldn't find him. I don't Southwark think we tried. Bridge, there it is, 68. Okay. Uh. Oh, okay. His mother is using chrys chrysanthemum pollen to give him an allergic cough. See, we should have gone to the nursery. <coughs> you were right. Mrs. Train has become addicted to laudanum oh. since she took it for her own illness some months ago. Seeking to hide the fact and protect the reputation of her family, she is now using Duncan's illness as an excuse to get it into the house and insist on caring for himself so she can secretly consume it. Yes. Gotcha. Okay, so we did joke about the mom being addicted to that, so at least... Yeah. So Good. we got two things absolutely correct. Nice. 38... Not quite. <laughs> 14 leads later, and we aren't even close. Yeah, we got, like, copy we got, kidnapping. We got negative uh, ass points. Sherlock we got, Holmes we, personally backhanded he, us. <laughs> yeah, puts on his ring. <laughs> he puts the, uh, Watson or I'll slap you with down. my... All right, you want to know the solution? Yeah. Because yeah. it gives it to us. I think I, I, think I know what like now. But. An interesting puzzle, says Holmes, as he paces by the fireside at 221B Baker Street, which, alas, had not... Has, uh, has not had quite the ending I sought. He turns to us and no doubt registers a confusion on our faces. When we began the case, says Watson, I was suspicious of Miss Train. Indeed, replies Holmes. But as I'm sure you, re you realize, Watson, nope. For Miss Train to be involved, <laughs> she would have had to be associated with an expert gang of kidnappers who had taken Mary Dunsworthy or have managed to uh, emulate the Dunsworthy kidnapping, despite many details not being reported in the press. No, the obvious starting point for this case was that Dunsworthy kidnapping. It was crucial to find out if Miss Sturton was taken by the same gang, and a visit to H.R. Murray and Lady Dunsworthy indicated she was not. We couldn't find Dunsworthy! What the fuck? Oh, yeah. I looked for that. There were not only discrepancies in the uh, materials used in each kidnapping, but the modus operandi was very different. In one case, we have the well-planned and efficient kidnapping of a wealthy woman's daughter. In the other, we have the governess of a family with a modest income thrust into a carriage from the street. In the first case, the kidnappers asked for an appropriate sum of money and gave the family almost a week to find it. In the second case, they asked for a sum of money well beyond the means of the family and demanded it the following dawn. It is also of note that the sum demanded in each case was £2,000, which suggests <coughs> that someone wanted the kidnappings to appear similar, and the details in the press would had not have been enough to imitate the kidnappings, as neither the color of the scarf nor the wording of the note was mentioned. So the perpetrator must be someone who knew the details by other means. At this point, one can conclude that the most likely culprit is someone connected with Mary Dunsworthy herself. Wiggins leans forward. <laughs> Lady Rosanna Dunsworthy said Mary's friends had persistently asked her about the kidnapping, he exclaims. Holmes smiles. You fucking idiot. <laughs> and now the investigation shifts from the Dunsworthys to Miss Sturton, her acquaintances, her work, her habits. 
It is to a person's idiosyncrasies that we must look when inquiring into a case such as this. Why Miss Certain and not some other governess? And in particular, does anything link her with someone acquainted with Mary Dunsworthy? Her habits, says Wigan softly. She often took long walks in the park. Ha ha! She did! And we found that out ten leads later. <laughs> in Hyde Park, evidently, responds Holmes. It being the only park in the, the vicinity in which one could take a long walk, and she would do this in all weathers and away from the established paths. Strange, is it not that a woman who walks alone in isolated places is kidnapped on a city street? Shut up! <laughs> that point alone is most enlightening. In Hyde Park, the first port of call was a police station, as Miss Sturton knew the policeman who worked in the parks. Constable Tyrrell said that Miss Sturton would normally walk near the gunpowder magazine. He also revealed that Constable Ponsford was on duty the morning of the kidnapping and that Ponsford refused to exchange shifts that day. At the gunpowder magazine, there were recent tracks from a large wagon and many tracks from a small cart coming from the west. There was also a burnt cigar, which raised the fascinating question. Why would you partly smark, smark, <laughs> partly smoke an expensive cigar if you were disturbed and had to run, suggests Wiggins. Yes, agrees Holmes. That is possible. But there's another reason that you idiots didn't think of which begins to shed light on this whole affair. A reason to partly smoke a cigar, or indeed to partly drink a drink or eat a food, is to taste it. If you are buying hundreds of expensive, expensive, illegally imported cigars, you want to know you are getting what you pay for. Of course! Watson stares at Holmes. Uh, he's like that guy who's like, oh, yes, indeed, partly, part know what you're paying for. Mm-hmm. It's like, don't, don't do that. Just, don't, just don't, just don't, don't, don't say half of what, like, you knew what I was talking about. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Cigars stored in the gunpowder magazine, which was built to be secure, dry, and cool. Perfect for tobacco. Holmes nods and proceeds to the heart of his narrative. Following the... Perfect for tobacco? I was Are like, wait, I thought you had humidor? to be in a human... Because I was just thinking, I was like, oh yeah. And then dry I was like, and wait. cool? I don't know. Well, I maybe, guess not. Maybe it was just made out of different stuff back then. Maybe. Following the cart tracks to the west led to the plant nursery, where a delivery list bore the name Grace Allen. Thursday's Times mentions a Grace Allen, who is an acquaintance and possibly friend of Mary Dunsworthy. Suddenly, we have the connection we saw between the two kids' nappings. Constable Tyrrell said that Sir Colin Pickwick's daughter, Grace, was involved in managing the park affairs. Before visiting Sir Colin, however, a trip to Amber & Co. confirmed the cigar found in Hyde Park was an expensive type containing West Indian tobacco subject to high import tax. So, I'm just going to say, at least we were somewhere near <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. At the home of Sir Colin Pickwick, reference was made to Grace being the widow of Eduardo Allend, who owned many plantations in the West Indies and exported tobacco and sugar around the world. Now we can begin to piece the puzzle together. When Grace returned after her husband's death and found her brother in charge of Hyde Park, she arranged for her contacts in the West Indies to send them some cigars along with the plants for the park, avoiding the heavy import tax on tobacco. You will have observed on the delivery list in the nursery that Grace receives all deliveries from the West Indies. At first, they probably intended to acquire a few boxes for themselves. Then perhaps their contacts began offering more, and they realized customs were paying little attention to the deliveries. Either way, they ended up receiving many boxes and needed a place to store them. They must have thought there was no problem in having a large stock of good cigars to hand. That was until last month, when their father ordered a review of all the buildings in Hyde Park. And suddenly, they had to get rid of all their illegal cigars, said Wiggins, and quickly before the magazine is inspected. Patrick goes to the Raven and Rat to find a buyer and is given the name Moriarty. He finds a way to contact Moriarty and tells them we are st uh, what they are offering. And here we come to Constable Ponsford, says Holmes, who had been making his way through the scars he'd been given. There was an open box of them in his house. Patrick and Grace must have suggested to Ponsford that if he took some cigars off their hands, then, on one of his morning shifts, he would not look in the direction of the gunpowder magazine. When Ponsford learned that Miss Sturton walked in the parks most mornings, he realized the siblings may be involved in the kidnappings of Miss Sturton and was struck with guilt, illegally imported cigars of one thing, and kidnapping quite another. So, Miss Sturton was taken to stop her seeing the deal take place. Exactly, Watson. She walked in the park most mornings and was friends with Constable Tyrrell. Patrick and Grace could not risk her seeing something, but the deal had to take place early in the morning when, they would be where, where, when there would be very little light and few people. It also had to happen when Ponsford was on duty and before the inspection of the magazine. Having so far only been guilty of import tax evasion, I doubt they felt ready to add murder to their crimes. The kidnapping of Mary Dunsworthy gave them an alternative. They followed Miss Thurton home from the park and waited for her to leave the house again. They could not keep her kidnapped during her walk, as they would have made, uh, as that would make the park the focus of the police investigation and their deal would become impossible. Where was she held? asked Watson. 
In Hyde Park, Holmes answers, I imagine at the lodge, the mud on her shoes was constant, consistent with the park, and she did not wear those shoes for her walks as she had boots for that purpose. Patrick and Grace drove her around the city streets and then into the park to create the effect of leaving London, and Mary had described in case of her capture. And now I realize where you've been, Mr. Holmes says Wiggins. You were trying to track down this Professor Moriarty. Holmes slumps in his uh, armchair with a dejected air and slowly injects a uh, syringe of heroin. Ah. Oh. Let me sleep. <laughs> Indeed. <Breakfast> of <laughs> Indeed. Forever. <laughs> forever. Indeed, Wiggins. I learned a week ago that a deal was due to take place and Moriarty was involved. My interest was piqued, not because this was some grand crime, but because it was precisely the opposite. You see, it is through their less grandois crimes that the most device devious of criminals are often caught. At such times, they were more careless than when engaged in their, their most heinous endeavors. Alas, I got close, but lost the trail in the warehouse in the East End. The capture of James Moriarty must wait until another day. He reaches into his jacket pocket and draws out a cigar of a type with which we are now very familiar. This is all I gained from my troubles, but somehow I cannot bring myself to smoke it. Watson, perhaps you would put it in your butt? Perhaps he will do the honors. He passes the cigar to Watson and reaches for his violin. For myself, I feel Paganini is calling. There are introductions to some of Holmes' informants in this case, and if you did not visit them during your investigation, you may read their entries now or before starting your next case. We're not going to do that. Holmes solved this case in nine leads. The train household, Rosanna Dunsworthy, H.R. Uh, Murray, Hyde Park, Police House, Hyde Park, Gunpowder Magazine, Hyde Park, Plant Ministry, Amber & Co., Constable Ponsford, and Sir Collins Pick Pickswick. Bradley and Simpson Cigar Devon, are free leads. Do not include them in calculating your score, which is zero. Well, hey. Excellent. So that... I feel pretty good. ...was Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. I hope you enjoyed. Click the I to go to the discussion. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.